Welcome everybody to another exciting edition of the top 12 most anticipated manga releases, this time for the month of July 2023. Lots of interesting books to talk about, so let's get started. Okay, so I might be cheating on this one, but I do have to talk about it. It is the final volume of Dr. Stone, volume 26. Now, the reason I say I'm cheating is that usually in these videos, I tend to recommend volume ones, new story collections, or anthology series, stuff like that. And I don't usually go and say, hey, you like this? You might consider getting 25 other volumes for you to enjoy volume 26. But this is pretty monumental. I like this series a whole ton. I've been collecting it ever since Viz Media put out the first volume, so I'm eagerly anticipating to get my hands on the last entry in Dr. Stone. I'm only going to read this one sentence here. The science-powered adventure comes to its dramatic conclusion. I don't want to read the full description because it'll spoil some things for people out there that might be getting into Dr. Stone or collecting Midway, stuff like that. But this series is great. I love its attention to detail to science and celebrating humanity's triumphs and achievements and all that fun stuff while also being tongue in cheek and having fun with Shonen Jump tropes and that power of friendship stuff. Love it. This is one of my favorite Shonen Jump series. I think Nichiro Inagaki and of course, Boichi did a phenomenal job. So yeah, if you are interested in Dr. Stone, you just watch the anime, consider getting the manga. The art is breathtakingly awesome at times and really fun too. I highly recommend Dr. Stone in its entirety if you can get it. Classroom of the Elite Horikita, Volume 1. This is being published by Seven Seas. This is an alternate universe spin-off manga from Classroom of the Elite. So technically you could go in blind, but it is recommended to at least have some knowledge of Classroom of the Elite. Horikita Suzune wants nothing to do with her annoying classmates. All she wants is her distant older brother, the student council president, to acknowledge her presence. Horikita turns to a student almost as antisocial as she is, Ayano Koji Kiyotaka, for help. Despite a rocky start, Horikita and Ayano Koji spark a friendship, but can their growing relationship survive the suffocating and cutthroat atmosphere of their elite school? Honestly, going off from that description, I think you're safe if you want to give this a blind buy. Definitely be on the lookout for Classroom of the Elite Horikita Volume 1. Like a Butterfly, Volume 1. I think this is the first time I'm talking about a shoujo beat book here from Viz Media, but it's pretty cool. You got a romance slice of life series written and drawn by Su Morishita. Suiden Shibazeki is often compared to a beautiful flower, but one that grows on the tallest peak of a mountain, forever out of reach. When Suiden develops feelings for the quiet Taichi Kawazumi, however, she doesn't want to be a distant flower. She'd rather leave her lofty perch and fly towards him like a butterfly. After Kawazumi rescues her from an unwelcome admirer, Suiden finds herself captivated by him. But Suiden is too shy to speak to anyone, much less this reserved karate boy. What's more, Suiden isn't the only one interested in Kawazumi. Will a class trip offer the opportunity to reveal her feelings before it's too late? Give Her Back To Me. This is published by Glacier Bay Books and written and drawn by Hana Chatani. Tragedy follows those whose lives are linked by a family heirloom and the strange curse it bequeaths. Simultaneously tender, yet haunting, Hana Chatani's shoujo horror manga depicts the human weakness such a curse reveals, the trauma and loss wreaked upon each generation by the last. This sounds wonderful. I love that it is a shoujo horror mystery title, and I cannot wait to grab this. Super interesting, and as always, great attention to detail from the folks at Glacier Bay Books. I need to grab this as soon as I can. From Tokyo Pop, we got Acid Town Volume 1, an action drama BL series written and drawn by Kyugo. In a city where lawlessness rules, Yuki and his best friend Tetsu attempt to rob the headquarters of the local Seidokai in order to steal money to pay for Yuki's little brother's hospital bill. The mission is a failure, but piques the interest of mob boss Kazutaka Hyodo. He offers Yuki a deal, come to visit him once a week and he'll take care of his brother's fees. 
Japanese. Yuki accepts this arrangement without question and so makes his first visit. This one sounds like it has a lot of angst, drama, and street action grit. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are excited to dive in with Acid Town Volume 1. Tear Moon Empire Volume 1. This is being published by J Novel Heart a fantasy historical series by Nozomu Mochitsuki and art by Mizu Morino. As the flames of revolution scour the Tier Moon Empire, its ever selfish princess Mia Luna Tier Moon meets her doom by the way of public beheading, only to wake up in the past as her 12-year-old self. It's time to shape up, recruit some allies, and exploit her knowledge of the future to save her empire. Is she up to the task? Not even slightly. But it's her only choice if she hopes to spare herself from yet another gruesome end at the blade of the guillotine. Now this is pretty interesting, you got a sort of, you have sort of a time travel variation of an isekai story, so that's pretty cool, plus the fact that it takes the uh, cute elements and mashes them up with French Revolution vibes, you're in for a fun time if you ask me. Digital Manga Publishing is putting out I Should Not Love You. This drama romance BL series is written and drawn by Chize Ogawa. Since he was little, Taisei Fujima has been known as the pretty boy in his town, and throughout his pampered and self-indulgent life thus far, there has only been one thing standing in his way, Keita Okachimachi, his former middle school classmate. Therefore, when Taisei is once again reunited with Okachimachi after three long years apart, Taisei can't help but get riled up, and thus begins Taisei's grand plan for revenge. Except something's wrong. Even though he loathes Okachimachi with every fiber of his being, why is Taisei's heart beating so fast that he can hardly think straight? If you're in for a good BL romance series, you might want to give I Should Not Love You a shot. Yen Press is putting out a beloved series that was super hyped and highly requested. This is The Summer Hikaru Died, Volume 1. This is a horror, mystery, supernatural BL series written and drawn by Mokumokuren. Two boys lived in a village, Yoshiki and Hikaru. The two did everything together, until the day Hikaru was encompassed by a mysterious light. That was when everything changed. Hikaru most of all. Yoshiki still wishes from the bottom of his heart to always stay by his side. But is there even a Hikaru left to be with? I love the supernatural aspect to this. By throwing that in there, you just piqued my interest. The summer Hikaru died comes out real soon, so I do recommend checking this out as well. Secrets of the Silent Witch from Yen Press. We got the first volume here coming out. This is an action fantasy school life series written by Matsuri Isora and art by Toby Tana. Monica Everett is the Silent Witch, the only mage in the world who can use enchanted magecraft. But underneath all the fancy titles, she's also the shyest girl you'll ever meet. In fact, she learned enchanted magecraft just so we wouldn't have to speak in public. Monica may be talented, but she has zero confidence, and now she is being tasked with infiltrating a prestigious academy and protecting the kingdom's second prince. How will she survive? I really like the art on this one. I love magical inspired stories like this, so I'm actually really excited to check this out. Oh boy, The Great Snake's Bride Volume 1. This is being put out by Seven Seas. This is a drama, romance, supernatural story written and drawn by Fushiyashi Kumo. Now let's see if I can read this description without uh, raising some eyebrows out there. For 500 years, a giant snake god has lived in the ancient mountain. Miyo, an unlucky woman from the nearby village, is offered as tribute to the great snake. Miyo fears that she will be devoured, but the snake treats her like a wife rather than a meal. His flicking tongue vibrates through gentle words as his powerful slithering body wraps around hers in an embrace. What does it truly mean to be the bride? of a beast. Now I know what you're thinking, this is kind of weird, and I know that, but if you go back and study some Japanese folklore and tales of yokai, you will know that there is a lot of interactions between these mystical, magical creatures and regular humans. And that is sort of the main inspiration here for The Great Snake's Bride. Now there is a bit of not safe for work stuff in here as the 
to get to know each other, but the story is actually pretty sweet. I have read some of this. Any of you are of the mindset that this won't bother you as much, the fact that it's a giant snake, I think you'll find something to enjoy here. It's a quiet, serene series with burst of action and great artwork. I think the art is a great selling point from uh, Fushiyashi Kumo. So I do recommend Great Snakes Bride. If you can get past the whole giant snake god deity thing, I think you'll find something to dig here with this uh, romantic series. The Devil is a Part-Timer Anthology series. This is being put out by Yen Press, the comedy supernatural isekai series. This is written by Satoshi Wagahara and art by Akio Hiragi. The Devil King and his friends check out a wedding venue, buy swimsuits to work at the beach, and get marooned on a desert island. This collection of original comic stories, drawn by a lineup of artists and fans of the series, collects episodes which may or may not have taken place during the main story. So this is pretty fun. I like anthology series, and if you're a fan of The Devil is a Part-Timer, you enjoy the anime of that. I think you'll be right at home with this comic anthology series with multiple artists working on it and of course the different stories within. Soichi Junji Ito Story Collection Hardcover. It's been a while since I've talked about a Junji Ito Story Collection book, so I'm excited to get this, even though I'm not a fan of Soichi because he really creeps me the F out with his obsession of biting nails. I, I, oh, I cringe. I can't do that. <laughs> Soichi, the unhinged second son of the Suji family, chews nails and makes them clatter and clack as he spouts horrific curses to bring about the most bizarre happenings. Whether it's summer holidays or a birthday party, Soichi can turn any occasion into a nightmare in a heartbeat. What is the terrible secret of his origin? Ten tales that celebrate the sinister and hilarious world of Soichi. I'm no stranger to Junji Ito, I trust his writing. He makes some fantastic work. So yeah, I'm really excited. Yay. <laughs> All sarcasm aside, uh, for real though, I am excited to get it. It's another wonderful Junji Ito collection for my bookshelf. But yeah, these releases look great. And I think uh, Viz Media does a wonderful job with the Ito books. So if you're an Ito fan, do check it out. And uh, let me know what you think of Soichi as a whole. Because I do remember that he did show up in other short story collections outside of this. But I was not vibing with that necessarily. 12 of the most anticipated releases for the month of July. But what about you guys? Interested in any of these releases? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you're not, let me know what are some of the other books that are coming out that you're interested in. That's going to be it for now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I truly do appreciate it. I've got to go. Stay safe. God bless. I will catch all of you on our next episode.